Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Flash for the Win. I am bringing you a broadcast on behalf of StarCast TV. Yes, that's right. I am going to be a part of the casting crew here for StarCraft, StarCast TV alongside other casters such as Nyokin and Sham2. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this commentary. This one will be a three game series between Rush and Soma. Uh, game one being here on Neo Sylphid. Rush here is the Purple Terran. While well, Soma is the red Zerg for this game. And it's interesting to watch the rise of Soma. Soma has been someone who has been really jumping up in the scene in terms of how good he is. And people have noticed a lot of potential behind him. And he made it all the way up to the uh, round of four, I believe, going all the way up against Light and eventually, unfortunately, losing to Light. Um, making some. I would say inexperienced mistakes. And so we a lot of people think that, oh, well, you know, Soma just needs a couple more months to practice, get more experienced, and he's gonna be ready to be a, a contender for these championships. But going to game number one here, we are gonna see that Rush is opening up with a center racks here, center eight racks, but not BBS, so we're just gonna go with the one barracks. Uh, pretty far forward actually. Usually if you if you do a normal eight racks, you're gonna be most likely putting your barracks around here at the front of your natural instead going all the way up to the center. Meanwhile, following up with somebody but home, looks like he's gonna be having the wall in here afterwards. And Soma, on the other hand, has gone for the 12 hatchery build. We're gonna have to see how this will play out with the aggressive barracks. Gonna see how many drones that Rush is gonna be able to get. Now, of course, these days with the standard two hatch middleisk play, you're not gonna be seeing any kind of uh, 12 hatch 13 pool. So we're gonna see the standard 12, 11, 10. But we're gonna see this drone come out here. Most likely not going to end up scouting this barracks. Yeah, it's going around the top path. And so this barracks will we'll get there unseen. Rush is also following up with the gas. So we're most likely gonna be seeing very aggressive strategy from Rush, gonna try to disrupt the enough economy here from Soma. And this is what we've seen actually from a lot of Terran players these days, is because the two hatch muta build has been so powerful against most of these Terran players and these Terran builds, we're going to be seeing a lot more ways for Terran to try to disrupt this, st uh, this uh, style. And here we got the two Marines poking away at the Overlord. Looks like they're not gonna get the, uh, I think the Overlord will make it into the bushes in time. Yes, it will. And now they come drone pull. Uh, trying to surround these three Marines. We're gonna see how good Soma's micro is. Now these Marines are being microed away very well. They're trying to get up against the wall so that the drones can't get too much of a surround, get too much surface area. But here come the drones. Nice drill onto that extractor there. Two drones have gone down. Meanwhile, it looks like all of the Marines are going down. Only two drones going down here. One more Marine coming and the drones are gonna look like they're gonna push it away. None of these drones are badly damaged. Only two drone kills from this very center racks, and this is going to be an excellent hold here from Soma. Soma is definitely going to be a little bit ahead at the moment. Meanwhile, back at home, we're going to see, of course, a factor coming out here off of this fast gas, and we're going to notice that there is only one guy in gas. So we might be seeing factory into command center. Um, of course, he he could be doing a star probe with the 100 gas that he has as soon as his factory finishes. That's also a possibility, um, but it doesn't seem like he's going to be going into any kind of like big Wraith build with two star port, otherwise he would have had much more gas than this, left three guys on gas for the star port. So we will see the star port come out, three guys go back on gas here, and it's most likely going to be some kind of vulture drop potentially. Um, I, I, again, I don't expect him to go one star port cloaked Wraith, it doesn't seem like what you'd want to do. If you're going to go for Wraiths, you, you probably want to be committing to it a little bit more. But on the other hand, um, you never know these days. I mean, Karen, with, with this style of build that Rush is doing, you, you could always try to disrupt as much as possible by even having three raids with Cloak off one star port is, is always an idea that Taren will have. And the Vulture will peek in here. We'll see that there's a Sun Colony being built and uh, he's not going to be able to test his luck going in there. Now, he might have more Vulture friends coming along. There's a second Vulture here. But again, I don't think that he's going to try to run by <clears throat> this initial Sun Colony. Meanwhile, Lair is almost done right here, about three-fourths of the way done. No Hydralis Den yet, so it doesn't look like there's going to be any kind of lurkers. He's most likely going to put the Spire up here at the front to block and help with the wall off here against this Vulture. And meanwhile, back at home, we will see the first Wraith come out. 
No, no control tower just yet. I do expect a control tower from the starport at some point, uh, pretty soon. I, I don't think that he's going to go for a fast science facility. But then again, he only did make two vultures, so dropship probably isn't going to be the most enticing play for him. Although, as I say that, he's dropping the control tower down right now. Expansion being started as well here for Rush. He's going to try to catch up in the economy game. Try to even things out here. Factory has built a machine shop and is not being lit up at all. A little bit strange here. It is going to go for engineering base, so he's going to go transition back into a bio place. So I do actually expect now, at this point, for some kind of a uh, start. Um, oh, he is going to Wraith. Okay. I do expect science facility to be thrown down soon, but he has gone for the Wraith and Cloak. So yeah, it is going to just be a... Looks like just a small harass here with the three cloaked Wraiths. Usually they get three, sometimes four. I think three... Does three one-shot? A drone? I think so, yeah. Three three race one shot or two shot drones. Meanwhile, without any kind of hydrogen, hydrogen just now being finished, he is going to end up losing a couple of these overlords here. Very annoying for Soma. And again, that's exactly the kind of build that Rush is playing here. It's very annoying, harassing, kind of trying to stall Zerg out, throw him off of this game. As you can see here, that he's been forced to build a Hydralisk, he's being forced to remake some overlords. So as this uh, spire is finished, there's actually just no Mutalisk in production right now, and he can't make any. Uh, one, one, or a couple being st started, but again, he he really wanted these Mutalisk out much faster. And we got an Overlord here in the corner that these raids are going to try to find around the map. Two raids flying around, third one on the way. Um, and again, this is just the style of game that Rush is going to try to do. And he's actually done a pretty good job of buying himself a decent amount of time to prepare for these Mutalisk that are incoming, and obviously. With the way that this build has been set up, he's not going to have that much defense against these Mutalisks just yet. His only primary form is going to be these Missile Turrets and these Wraiths. And as we know, Wraiths are not that great against Mutalisks, though, although they do have Cloak. So that is something that we must watch out for, having now gone up to four Wraiths. It's going to be pretty nicely done. Uh, nice for him to defend. Oh no, sorry, three. Where's the fourth one? I thought he had a four. I digress. Cloak has been shown now. He's going to be able to run away and pick off a couple of these Mutalisks. So Rush has now definitely solidified himself as an advantage in this game. He has evaded pretty much all of the pressure that Soma would be able to throw upon him in the early game. However, as we say that, we are going to be seeing that Lurker aspect being started here, almost finished now for Soma, and he might look for a potential break here at the front. Now, raids, they do shoot down, and Lurkers can't shoot up. However, there's going to be a big issue because he's just not going to have enough DPS right now um, to deal with any kind of big Lurker push. No, I'd be coming down. Now, is he going for drop here? He's got two Overlords conveniently placed here near the wall of Rush's base. Now these raids are going to be flying overhead. Will they see the overlords? It looks like they didn't see the overlords, unfortunately. Or maybe they did and they just thought that there were Hydralisk or Mutalisk around. They didn't want to risk it. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Science Facility has been finished. Science Vessel, first one being started. We're going to probably see a raid coming down here. Second bunker being built for Rush. Definitely wants to play very safe right now. I think he probably saw the Lurker Eggs is what I'm assuming. Even a forward bunker here. Three bunkers playing really safe. He knows that because he doesn't have that much production overall in terms of ground defense with marines and siege tanks, that he's going to need these extra bunkers here to keep him alive. Now, he will have a vessel out, so he won't need to be burning scans, uh, although he doesn't even have an academy at this moment. But he won't have to burn any scans if he had them with the vessel up in the air. Soma going to go for this big Ling Lurker attack here at the front, and I think that it's going to be handled pretty well here. Now, it depends on how many SCVs he's going to lose. A decent amount of SCVs are being killed right now, but I think that this will be held pretty easily. There's one tank out here, the, the Zerglings already uh, died, and the Cloak here on these raids are basically able to ward off the Mutalisk. And once the Mutalisk are gone, he's going to have no defense against these raids. So Lurker's forced to pull back. Siege mode is done as well. Two Siege tanks. Um, are finished, so there's almost no chance that there any kind of big lurker bust is going to happen. Now there is, we're going to see this transition into Hive. He could try to walk a defiler across the map here. Um, that is obviously a possibility. Hydra's and Muda's coming back home here to defend against these raids that have been very annoying. And again, these raids have definitely bought Rush a lot of pressure in this game. Now, at the same time, Rush has not found this hidden third base just yet from Soma. He should think that something is up, so I do definitely expect him to at least consider that the possibility that Soma has a hidden third base. But at the moment, he doesn't know exactly where it is, and that is a little bit of an issue. Now, the SCV is coming out here. We'll be able to get by. Now, these mutas will be able to pick it off. So, obviously, just because your mutas are positioned here doesn't mean that, oh, he's he must be hiding a third base. He doesn't want me to scout this. However, um, 
it, it is a possibility again because he doesn't have vision. He he doesn't have an academy just yet. It's actually very strange. This academy is so late. Uh, I guess, but he needed a lot more economy to get out of these siege tanks, these vessels, and these bunkers up at the front. So I don't blame him for not having academy just yet. Hive has finished. The Filer Mound, as we can see, is halfway done, and this third base is starting to get saturated with more drones coming along the way. The third gas is about to finish. So Soma is going to be able to put himself into a decent position. However, the first push that Rush is going to come out with will definitely be quite scary. Not a lot of production here, but the tech behind the push is going to be strong. I mean, if we see here three vessels, or two vessels right now, third one is on the way, about uh, a third of the way done, and three siege tanks with a fourth one on the way as well. Oh, I guess spoke too soon. He, he won't have that. But I think that when this initial push comes out and he starts building some medics from these uh, barracks and he can launch himself into that initial push, it will be very scary for him. Now, again, his academy was late, so he's going to have to wait for stim and most likely marine range. So this, this push isn't coming just yet. Consume will be done by then. But again, the tech is the tech is there. Irradiate's done. He's going to have a lot of energy banked up on these vessels. As we see so far, three irradiates total on these vessels with a third one coming out. So by the time this push comes out, you're probably going to be thinking about five irradiates total. Definitely going to be able to block these defilers that are going to be uh, causing a nuisance here. Again, more damage from these raised mules here is camping on top of them for when the overlord pops out. We've got two overlords over here. One overlord slowly making his way over to the main. And actually, a scan coming down. I'm not sure where the scan went. Can't really see it. Um, but here comes the big push. Marine range isn't done yet. I'm not sure if he did marine range first or stim, but he has, definitely has not been researching it. He only finished stim, from what I see. These raids have gotten a lot of drone kills here. They will finally go down to these Mulas, but unfortunately, Mulas on the other side of the map are not seeing this push move out. Now, obviously, he is positioned really hard here to defend his third base, and marine range has just been started, and this nice canal will help. But he's going to have to play really defensively here. We're going to see where these irradiates go. It's going to really come down to how much time that he can buy for more defiles to come out. Another scan going down uh, going on, down on the natural, and here come the irradiates. Irradiating two lurkers, I think. Yes, two lurkers and a defiler. Defiler's just going to throw down another swarm, but two lurkers will go down. A defiler has gone down, and now he's just going to, yeah, there, there we go. Just shuffle over to the third base or put pressure between these two bases and basically make Soma think, well, okay, where am I really going to try to pressure? Where Where is this attack going to come from, and where should I be making my defenses in order to respond to it. Now, because he killed two lurkers here, he's forced to bring lurkers through this nice canal and defend this front area, and that means that he wanted to maybe pressure this third base here instead. But he's coming back around to the natural base, and here comes the stim. He thinks that the swarm should be fading away, and that's exactly what should be happening right now. Defiler will be irradiated. Scourge coming in here, nothing's gonna happen. The Marines are defending these vessels out very nicely, and I think there's only two lurkers. Okay, three lurkers down here, one irradiate. Vessels gotta be very careful, does not wanna lose these vessels. Very precious to him right now. This is just basically the only way for him to really break through. Now, he does have a lot of fire bats. He made so many fire bats for this push. And I think that his goal right now is to make sure that if he can kill enough of these lurkers, that the fire bats can run in and basically stop this. Now, there aren't a whole lot of defense here at the third base. He can try to pivot over there, but these science vessels, because he's banked up so many with that early science facility, it's gonna be really helpful for him to push in into this force. Now, the, the fire bats are gonna come in here, Stimmy coming forward. They're not gonna actually go in just yet. The medics are trying to heal them back up to full health. He is trying to look for that big break with those fire bats. Unfortunately, siege tanks, when lurkers are not clumped up, the splash damage isn't actually gonna do anything underneath Swarm. So he's gonna have to wait for more irradiates right now, and he's only got one so far. He's continuously reinforced here with more fire bats, more science vessels. The siege tanks, unfortunately, not able to get much damage down. Now, the Swarm is, is done over these lurkers here, so he has an opportunity here to push in with the siege tanks. Unfortunately, not going to be fast enough. Uh, enough. The, the siege tanks are out of range. But another Irady has gone down on these lurkers. Another Defiler is coming up. Two Defilers, actually. And we will see a Irady on one of the Defilers so far. The Firebats, once again, trying to go in, see if they can maybe poke through. Unfortunately, not able to. There's too many lurkers underneath this swarm. The Zerglings are coming over here, trying to sneak, pick up one of these tanks, and they do manage to pick up one of the tanks. Really well done. Another forward swarm coming in here. The Firebats are going to be able to walk forward into these lurkers, but I don't think they're going to really get they got one lurker, but they're not. it's not enough. Oh, the Scourge here are going to be able to pick up so many of these vessels. Two vessels go down, I think, and that is definitely not what Rush was looking for. Really needs to protect those vessels. That, that is the only reason why this push is going to be able to continue forward uh, at this front. In the meantime, Soma has expertly taken this fourth base down here, realizing that all the pressure is as natural. He's gonna have to try to expand on the other side of the map and continue to solidify his economic advantage right now because Rush has not decided to go ahead and take a third base. He has continued to rely on this two base macro play with one tank, one vessel coming out every single cycle. 
So the longer that Soma was able to hold us off, even though, yes, he is bleeding a lot of units, the longer this game goes on, the more in favor of Soma this will be. Now, the supplies we can see is not that much in favor of Rush. Rush is ahead by approximately 30 supply, but in the grand scheme of things, when Dark Swarm exists, 30 supply could basically be no supply advantage. And once this fourth base really gets up, yeah, Ultralisk as well coming along. We have more upgrades being created. These Zerglings are at 2-1 upgrades. And they're being able to come around here and pick up a lot of these siege tanks. Again, these big tech units here from Terran are really the only reason that this push is even still existing. But at the same time, again, the clock is ticking down. More defilers, more uh, more swarms are coming out to stall on this push. Now, there is a, a little bit of an aggression here to this fourth base to try to pick it off. However, unfortunately for him, there is going to be an ultralist that's going to be coming over here. And one ultralist will be able to easily clean up this force. The ultra. Meanwhile, more swarm pushing forward here, picking off basically all the tanks. I don't see any more tanks here. Only one more tank left, and not even a whole lot of fire bats. So this swarm defense has done all that they needed to do. Um, Soma not paying attention to this fourth base just yet, but there we go, cleaning up those fire bats, cleaning up the zerglings, and now Rush is finally realizing I need to shut down this new base. This fourth base here is too important. The irradiates are coming down here onto these defilers, but the zerglings are crack upgraded. Two one upgrades on these units. And the uh, science vessels, oh, two science vessels going down again. Oh man, I, I don't think that, that Rush's push here is going to have much more gas left in the tank. Now this Ultralisk is by himself, definitely need a little bit more support here. This 4th base can go down, but I think Soma, I, all he needs is one Swarm. There's the Swarm, now 3 Lurkers underneath that Swarm. Yeah, this 4th this base is going to be held easily. More Ultralisk, more Zerglings coming in here, and that is going to be a good game. Unfortunately for Rush, that push, although a very powerful push, was unable to break through and Soma was able to s stabilize himself. So game 1 going over to Soma. Really well played there from Soma. Yes, his uh, initial idea behind stalling out that two-hatch style that we see Zergs do very often was doing wonders and doing very well. Unfortunately, just not able to get enough of an advantage to break through. Game 2 can be on Destination over here. A very old-school map. Definitely a lot of uh, creative builds that can be done on it. One of my favorite builds of all time would be the Sky High versus Jadon game where Sky High, um, he did a, a forward eight racks on the cliff, on, below the cliff of the Zerg base and then lifted up the barracks, pretended that he was doing a forward eight racks and tried to bunker rush natural. And then Jadon fell for it, didn't realize that there was actually a barracks with four Marines in the back of his base and he ended up losing the game. But anyways, we're gonna be having Soma up here at the top position as the yellow Zerg, which means that down here at the bottom position as the blue Terran is going to be Rush. And again, Rush moving this SCV out very early could be another forward eight racks. Now, Destination's Rush distance is much longer than most normal maps. Again, two player maps generally have to give some advantage because you know where your opponent is by creating a slightly longer Rush distance. But here we go, another forward eight racks. Coming down here, I do like the positioning. If a drone scout does come out, the drone will most likely come through the middle of the uh, middle of the map like this, and uh, walk all the way around. So this barracks will most likely never get scouted. And destination also a very good wall wallable map. As we can see, he's going to be building a supply depot here, another depot below, and then factory or barracks down here will be a link tight wall. Now on the other side of the map, we're going to be seeing a nine pool here. Nine pool, no gas. from Soma. And the 9 pull actually just completely destroys an 8 racks. So this will be a very advantageous position for Soma. You know, 8 racks is designed to punish those fast hatchery builds. Unfortunately, 9, nine pull is kind of the opposite of a 12 hatch. And we see the overload right when the overload finishes, right when the pool should be able to finish as well. Nicely lined up with 3 larvae to, to go. There it is. All 3 larvae are going to be forming into zerglings here. Here comes the SCV scout. He's gonna be very upset when he doesn't see that early hatchery and he sees those six zerglings start to run down the uh, run down the ramp. He will see the hatchery just go down now and he's gonna realize, oh no, this is a nine pool. Yep, here come the six zerglings. And will this SCV go down? SCV almost goes down. Nicely done using the minerals to 
glitches SCV. But yeah, as soon as he sees those links come out, like, I gotta pull back with these Marines. We might have to pull SCVs as well to block this ramp by the time the Marines get here. This Overlord will also see, oh, hey, there, there are Marines coming back here. I wonder where they came from. He's gonna know that this was a 48 Rex. Now this Overlord will most likely go down here. Three Marines, oops, sorry, three Marines do have a lot of DPS to be able to pick off this Overlord. But now they have to get up this ramp before the Zerglings are able to get here. Where's the SCV pool? Here comes the SCV pool. Will the Lings be able to get up the ramp in time? No, they won't. They're going to try to pick off one of the SVs? No. Not even try to pick off one. He realized that he was a little too late. That Overlord pickoff was very good for Rush. Definitely tried to slow down the Zerg. But, I mean, Soma doesn't really care that much. He's just going to go right into his lair. Natural Hatchery is almost finished up. In the meantime, we're going to see another attempted push out here. Because Rush knows that after those initial six Zerglings... Zerg wants to drone up, and so this is a very smart idea here from from Rush. He's going to try to force the Zerg to pull drones, or at least commit to more Zerglings. And we're going to see here that some of the Zerglings are actually a little bit out of position. He's trying to find this proxy factory because he knows that on Destination, this such a crazy two-player map, that he is most likely going to be going for a proxy factory off of that 8-racks. However, Rush has not gone for that, and now these Zerglings are so spread out, out of position, he also ended up losing one of those Zerglings early on to try to get up the ramp, and now he's going to see that this little push here is going to start another bunker rush. He's going to have to commit to a couple more Zerglings. He only has... Five total, I believe, with no speed on these Zerglings. So this is going to be a very hard hold here from Soma. He's going to have to just delay for more time. A uh, Zerglings going to pop out from these eggs soon, and these Marines fought a little too much far forward. And uh, Bunker will finish, but I mean, there's only one Marine, so the DPS on this will just not be enough. SCV trying to be cheeky and repair the Bunker. The Zerglings will be able to pick off the SCV, or at least stall the SCV from repairing, and the Bunker will be down. But there is a Vulture here, and there's no sunken colony here at this base, so he. I don't know if a uh, um, Metaball Boost has been started. Metaball Boost is finished. So this Vulture here will mostly get surrounded by these Speedlings. He's got to be very careful with how he does this. He needs to like, pick up at least a decent amount of these Zerglings to make sure that no counterattack is going to be possible here. But Soma's Micro is very good right now. Picked up the Vulture, only lost a couple of those Zerglings. Now another Vulture is out here. He's going to again try to pick off enough Zerglings so that no counter pressure is going to be there. He doesn't have to commit to more defenses. But there's a lot of Zerglings being made here. He's going to again try out the Micro is best against this potential counterattack. Second Vulture now. Then I'll be able to one-shot these Zerglings. He's done a very good job. He's, he's done enough, I think. These Vultures have done enough, for sure, to be able to slow down Zerg. On the meantime, though, again, we're going to see that two-hatch Spire play coming out. Spire's about halfway finished. Unfortunately, he just doesn't have much of an economy because he was forced to bring back all of his drones into the main. main. Now, he doesn't have 11 drones here. He's being forced to pull back these drones because of these two Vultures here that are going to be an absolute nuisance. And he doesn't want to make any more Zerglings because if he continues to make too many Zerglings, well, by the time the Spire finishes, one, he's not going to have the Larva to make enough Mutalisk, and two, as we can see from his Mineral count, he's not even going to have enough minerals to be able to start a lot of those Mutalisks. At best, when these, when the Spire finishes, he's only going to be able to make two or three Mutas, and that's just not enough. Three Vultures now coming out here, and a Wraith. We're going to see that a Rush has just not even gone for that Command Center this time, is just really banking on this Harass to do enough damage. Now, some Colony is being started. These Zerglings are trying their best to hold the top of the ramp against these Vultures. Two Vultures still exist, though. One Vulture might get picked off right here. No, the Vulture is going to stay alive. The Sun Colony will finish, but these Vultures are going to get up into the base, and the Wraith and the two Vultures here. Looks like this will probably end the game. I don't see a way for Soma to hold on. A third Vulture is in the base right now. Soma has lost all of his pressure. And uh, Rush's little cheeky 8 racks build continuously trying to slow down these Terran players has done enough, I feel like. And these two Milos, yes, you have Milos now, Soma, but unfortunately for you, you only have four drones. Meanwhile, back at home, we've got the two Starport Wraith coming out as well. Cloak is on the way. Cloak is about halfway finished. So by the time these Milos are able to get there, this Cloak will just about be finished. And there's no Overlord around here either to be able to detect against these Wraiths couple marines even just to help out a little bit with this dps he doesn't even need missile turrets because his cloak is about to finish as well and these mutas count is just too low at this moment two star port wraith is just able to micro well against this and there's the gg from soma that will be it really well done again it looks like potentially that if terrans just want to eight racks into vulture wraith my uh harassment this could be the way to really stall out that two hatch mutas because you're just not going to have a lot of production with two hatch muta your whole game plan for 2 Muta is a little bit actually linear.
you don't have a very flexible plan. You're just hoping that your Mutalists are able to do enough damage to buy you enough time to get your third base up. So Terrans, it looks like, are just going to say, okay, you can go ahead and go for your 2-action Mita. I'm going to make sure that because your drone count's going to be very low, I'm going to kill off all of your drones. We'll see on this third map here on Circuit Breaker if Rush will go for the 8 racks again. So, on Circuit Breaker spawning down here at the bottom right hand position as the... Looks like a dark green. It's a little weird color. But as a dark green Zerg, we're going to have Soma. Which means that up here as the pink Terran, not a very common color you see, is going to be Rush. So series tied up 1-1. If you had to say that Rush's 8 racks builds have done a decent amount of damage, they have very much slowed down Soma's strategy, and he has defended quite well against the pressure that Soma could throw back at him. So we're going to see again if another 8 racks will come out here. I don't expect him to do 8 racks all 3 games in a row. I don't think that's usually in the best interest for a player to just 8 racks, 8 racks, 8 racks every single game. As we can see here, 8 supply, not going for that forward barracks anymore. Soma on the other hand, now he is going for Overlord, so I, I was going to say he might get tilted and try to go for some kind of like 9 pool speedy build and try to cheese him out, but that's not what's going to happen here. Most likely we're going to be seeing an 12, 11, 10 from Soma. I don't expect him to really go for Overpool. Not too common of a build in ZVT. Overpool usually much more favorable of a build to go for in PvZ. So unfortunately for Soma, with the incorrect scout, he's going to be able to scout. Most likely with the uh, two drones that come out for the 12 hatch, he's going to be able to send a second drone out and hopefully not scout cross map. He's just going to scout the normal way of going vertical. But there's the 12 hatch. And Rush, wow, from one end to the other, two 8 raxes into now a 14 command center. Very greedy play here from Rush. And this drone looks like it is going cross map. So this 14cc is going to be scouted last. This is actually really good for Rush. Now Rush has put the command set up on the high ground, does not want to be too greedy putting it on a low ground. The way that this happens is that I believe that a high ground CC you can actually defend against nine pools at the very least. Whereas if you put it on the low ground, you just lose your command center and you're super, super far behind. But again, 12, 11, 10 here from Soma. Most likely, again, probably going to see the 2x meta. I think it's just too standard, especially in these positions right here when he scouts this. And I think he, he's going to realize very quickly that this is going to be a vertical scout or vertical map position. That because your naturals are so close together, this area right here for the natural of Terran is going to be very vulnerable to Mito's Karas. Meanwhile, no gas being thrown down yet, so we're not going to see any kind of mech play coming out. It's most likely going to be bio, and yep, there's a second barracks. Coming down for a rush. Now, luckily for Soma as well, that this SCV will be last scouting his build. So, by the time that this SCV will get here, there will definitely be a lot of, uh, or at least not a lot, but a, a couple of Zergings out to defend this ramp and be able to stop Terran from ever scouting into this base and seeing what kind of tech tech path that Soma has opted for. Here comes the bunker. And here comes the floating command center over. Speed we will not be started as well here for Soma. So it's a little bit interesting to note that because he has not really seen the uh, 14cc until just now, he's gonna find it now, he's now he's gonna go ahead and scout, he's just gonna confirm that yes, you are going to fat two barracks bio. It's nice to see that Soma can drone up during this time as well, because he knows that there's gonna be no uh, potential harass coming out. Now the SV does get inside the base, this is actually really good for him. Rush is gonna be able to know exactly what kind of tech that he's gonna be seeing. Or actually the layer is finished, and I think that he did not see it, the, the, the spire was thrown on after the SV left. Yes, if he's going to try to get back in here, and it will be able to get in and scout the Spire. Now, again, he didn't see a Hydra Den anyways, even when the layer is finished. And if you're going to go for some kind of Lurker play, you're going to have to turn the, the Hydra Den earlier anyways than when your layer finishes. So as soon as he saw the layer with no tech, he knows this is going to be Spire anyway. So Soma was just going to throw down Spire regardless. He's going to be prepared for this build. 
academy being started. Once this academy is just about to finish, it'll most likely go down as Engineering Bay as well. And there it is, Engineering Bay is started. Meanwhile, once again, this the fast third base here from Soma. Interestingly enough, he is taking it here at the 6 o'clock position and not at the bottom left-hand main over here. And I think the reason why is because if you're not going Lurkers, it's a lot easier to protect this base because if you're going for Zergling Mutalisk, you're going to be able to protect this base a lot better because of the close proximity to your main and actual. On the other hand, if you do go Lurker, then obviously you want to take this bottom left-hand base because you're going to be able to stop any kind of Terran push at the ramp. Now that we're seeing a much standard game, a much more standard game compared to the other ones, we're going to see how much Mutalisk pressure that Soma can do. Now again, Soma's a very aggressive Zerg. I do expect him to try to trade off a couple meters for more damage on this Terran, but Terran here has been very far ahead. He has gotten that 14cc, and really the counter to the 14cc is 3 hash before pool. As a matter of fact, one of the things that Jadong did so well back in the day against Flash is because he knew Flash was going to go 14cc. Flash would always go 14cc, so he would respond with the 3 hash before pool to try to make sure that he himself got an economic advantage. But here comes Mutis. Plus one carapace being started as well. Very standard. This has just been the new style that Zergs have been looking at is this fast carapace with these Mutalisks. I do expect them to um, potentially tech into something else. Now, again, a lot of Zergs have been thinking like, oh, well, if I'm going to be getting this faster base with this faster gas, I can just go into just pure Mutalisk production, get two to three control groups of Mutas, and try to run over to Terran like that. Now this Mutalisk Dance here is very smart from Soma, just trying to burn some stims and waste some medic energy. Rush is being actually very patient here, not using stims, which is very good because he needs to conserve his medic energy for when this initial push does come out. And Rush has just been, yeah, just stop commanding these marines to make sure that they don't get away. Now that was a burned stim right there, a little bit haphazard. Plus one carapace by halfway done now, and just more Mutalisk. Yep, more Mutalisk coming down for Soma. He really just wants to pressure this Marine Force. Scans coming down here. We're going to see where they are. Just at the main and actual, he's going to see that there is no new tech structure. So from this information, Soma sh or Rush should know that there isn't any kind of additional tech, or he knows that there's no additional tech building, and he should think that it's going to be a third faster hatchery. Soma has lost a couple of Mutas here. Again, he's very aggressive, wants to trade off Mutas, in order to get more pressure and stop this initial push that comes out from Terran. Whether or not it's worth it or not is the question. It's only down to 7 meters now and, a, and another one is already down to very low health. So definitely has to kind of chill out a little bit with this attack and not get too over eager because these marines are well positioned in the middle line here. And again that plus one range has finished by now. This is the nice part about Circuit Breaker is that this little area on this right side is very punishable. Now once again, no other tech structure coming down here. Queen's Nest is being started here at the third base. So it could be like a potential crazy Hydra style where you just go meet us into straight Ultralis or potentially a Defiler walk. But again, you usually would want to see a Defiler walk with Lurkers and we don't see any Lurkers just yet. We don't see a Hydra even started. So most likely Hive into Ultralisks is going to be the play. And there's actually the Hydra Den. So we're going to see Hive started here, Hydra Den going down. So it could be a Defiler walk to the natural base. He's done a very good job here of making sure that this Terran force does not come out. Now there is a bunch of Bio and Valks have been started from Rush. I didn't even see that he had uh, begun that, but I guess we saw the Armory coming out here. So he should know as well that there is Valks. Yeah, there's a Scourge. He did see it when his flyby with the Mutas into the base. And the Valk, the Valk not getting any shots off, already taken down to almost half HP. So he's got to be very careful. These Valk builds have been good for Terran, but the problem is that the Micro from Zerg has been really good to snipe these Valks very quickly. And the Valks only get off maybe one or two volleys before they end up going down, and it's just not worth their weight. You're, you're paying so much money for these Valkyries early on, and it's you really definitely need to be able to get a lot of damage onto these Mutas to the point where Zerg must pull back. If Zerg can still pressure you with Mutas after you've got Valkyries, it's just not worth it. Here comes the first couple of volleys onto these Mutas. They are now very badly damaged. Yep, about half health on most of these Mutas. And now, here we go. Now he's being forced to pull back. The Valkyries are out. Two Valkyries. The third one is coming along the way. 
So this push is very scary. This is a nice timing window here for Rush to get into the base of the Zerg player. Now the Hive has finished. Defiler Mound, uh, not even, I don't see it anywhere. Defiler Mound just got me started. So, and the Lurker, I don't, I'm not sure if Lurkers uh, have finished either. I don't think so. We do have the Hydras here, but I, okay, Lurker, Lurker Aspect has finished, but they are not in time. The Lurker Eggs just finished now. Sangha Colonies are being uh, started. They're not finished just yet. The Mutas are going to have to come down here and try to defend, but it looks like this third base is just going to be forfeit. These Lurkers, when they pop out, will just get easily sniped down by these Marines. The Mutas are trying to fly overhead here, but the Valks are doing such a good uh, job of warding them off with the positioning. Once this, uh, once these Lurkers come out, a nice volley here from the Mutas, uh, from the Valkyries. The Mutas are such badly damaged. Nice micro here from the Valkyries, and that's going to be GG Rush with a really beautiful Valkyrie timing window here and that is going to be all she wrote Rush with such a beautiful timing window right there realizing that he just need to go Valks against this this mass Muta style of build and he's able to take down this this series two to one really well done there it's very interesting to watch how these both these players played out the series with uh, Rush going for the double eight rags into the 14 CC in the third and final game and we did manage to finally see a standard game from, from these two where we did see the 14cc versus 12, 11, 10 with the faster base off that two hatch meta. And Rush's response was just to say, well, I'm just gonna go Valkyries and make sure that I can stop your metas because your attack is gonna be so far delayed, especially when he scanned that main and actual realizing that, hey, there's no other tech here. He must have gone for a faster ba a third base off of this two hatch meta. I'm gonna go for mass Valks because I know that he's only gonna have Mutalist to defend, and I'm going to hit this timing window and be able to crush him. And that's exactly what he did. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in future cast here for StarCast, and I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.